Thank you. Let's go back to a more traditional framework where there is only a finite number of uh, concept quantities that evolve. And uh, I want to present something about uh, a situation where these multiple concept quantities evolve at the same time scale, and which will be eventually the diffusive time scale. Uh, so, as talked before, we consider only for the moment only one dimensional system, so they are nice uh, thematically. And uh, uh, the, when you have uh, more concept quantities, you can have a situation where they evolve at a different time scale, like uh, in the usual. Uh, Fermi-Pasta Western chain, you have volume, you have energy, you have momentum, you have Euler scale, where uh, physically, like in the talk before of Herbert, things evolve ballistically uh, following Euler equation. And then there are other time, space-time scale, like diffusive or super-diffusive time scale, where the uh, thermal effect happens. Uh, we want now to study more situation where all the concept quantities evolve at the same time scale that will be diffusive. So then we will go back to other situations. So the typical example are in the rotor chain, and then we will see other, will be mathematically very difficult, there will be no results, basically, and, uh, and then we will study something about oscillator chain when we put some conservative noise that will destroy some of the concept quantities that the system is actually. Uh, so the rotor chain, people are familiar, I'm sorry for people that already are the first part of this talk. Uh, the rotor chain are just to think about uh, a large number of disks that are interacting uh, with the difference of the angles, well, like uh, some potential. As, as in the talk of Herbert, let me call her I, the difference of the angles between two rotors, so qi minus qi minus one, and the interaction happens through the, through the difference of the, so the, the, the rotors like to get aligned between them. And uh, this will be the Hamiltonian uh, of the system. Uh, so we assume EI, we define EI as the energy of uh, the single rotor, which will be just the potential energy of the interaction with the previous one, and its kinetic energy. Uh, furthermore, the system is attached to two, two thermostats, Langevin thermostat, at different temperature eventually, TL and TR. And uh, uh, there are also two uh, uh, tension, not, not tension, two different forces, tau L and tau R, that tries to move the, the, that acts on the, on the last and on the first one. So these are the equation of the motion. And so you see that there is tau L, is some force that is, move, is trying to give some velocity to the, to the first rotor, and tau R on the other side. So will be, this will be tau R. Uh, the presence of uh, tau L and tau R Put immediately, the, even the state, when you look at the stationary state, there will be some non equilibrium stationary state, except in the situation where uh, tau L is equal to tau R and the two temperatures are equal. This uh, uh, term here, multiplied by the parameter gamma, are the uh, Langevin thermostat that tries to stabilize the temperature on the side. So, with this, this uh, Inside, for the moment, consider just the Hamiltonian dynamics. And uh, uh, in this system, we expect that there are only two conserved quantities. Of course, this, this we don't know. And this is related to uh, what Herbert was talking before. There could be other conserved quantities, locally conserved. And it, I mean, of course, the, the, the boundary condition will break this, uh, this boundary condition. But the point is how many locally conserved quantities there are inside as the system goes to infinity. When the system is finite, there could be uh, more. But we expect that when the system is infinite, for this, for this rotor chain, which is very far away from integrable system that we were talking before, uh, only these two 
quantities should evolve macroscopically. So let's take this assumption. If you take this assumption, you expect that uh, the, uh, when uh, you take, uh, uh, for, actually for the infinite system, you will be, you, there are only two, uh, uh, there are only uh, Gibbs measure, a stationary measure, which parameterized by the inverse temperature beta and the average momentum P. The particular case in which you put this boundary, you consider the finite system, and you put this boundary condition, if you take the same temperature for the thermostat and the same, uh, and you act in the, with the same force on the two sides, then you will have uh, a unique equilibrium stationary measure. As soon as you move differently on the left and the right, or you take different temperature, you will be uh, in a non-equilibrium situation. So you will not have uh, such uh, explicit stationary state. The velocity p bar you just that you get in the case you take the same force that that will impose a rotation of the system, and uh, the the velocity of the the angular velocity will be just the force that you applied divided by gamma, which gamma was the intensity of the interaction with the the thermostat. Okay, so we would like to understand, write down what are the macroscopic equation that, uh, uh, that governs the macroscopic evolution for, for, these, uh, for these two quantities. And the first thing you observe that there is no ballistic transport in this system. If these are the only two quant concept quantities that are relevant in the limit, there's no ballistic transport. We should look at diffusive scaling, look at diffusive transport. The fact that there's no ballistic transport you see here because the current associated to the velocities is just minus V prime R. And for if it's local equilibrium established, there is no tension in this, in this situation. There is no, no way to, every, every stationary, every equilibrium measure will give uh, uh, zero average to the current of the, the velocity. So there is no, cannot, you cannot have any ballistic transport in this this system. So you have, uh, uh, now, all I will say now is complete heuristic because we cannot prove mathematically anything on this, but uh, just do a, a, formal, a formal linear response argument and you will get the Onsager uh, factor for the expansion of uh, the, the expectation of the current uh, for the two different currents. This is just you, the way to compute this. You take some uh, um, state with, uh, with, with the parameters beta and uh, p are uh, slightly, slightly changed. And uh, you, you expand respect to the perturbation, to the, to the dependency you give to these parameters, and you, and you get the four, the, four, um, uh, the, the four coefficient of the Onsager matrix. And uh, so this will give you first uh, what will be the macroscopic equation, we have to compute what will be the actual macroscopic current out of this expansion. Uh, so the, the, the formal linear argument gives you this green cube of formulation for the Onsager matrix where, where there are these uh, currents inside. It's a usual standard thing, but uh, uh, there are some symmetries that you can exploit of the dynamics. And the symmetry tells you that the off, the, 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 the off diagonal term, for example, should be uh, equal if one change the velocity minus bar. K beta p should be equal to p, k beta if p bar is changed to minus p bar. So this is one thing that comes out of the symmetry of the dynamics. And uh, if you exploit further the symmetry, you also have that uh, the the diagonal term corresponding to the inverse temperature as the structure is related to the, the, to the same object, but with zero velocity, minus p squared, the, the, the other diagonal term. So this, uh, this relation come out, out, of the, out of the symmetry of, uh, of the dynamics. And uh, so this was 
this remark was done already in, uh, in the previously times. And uh, uh, the point that you are reduced to only two uh, parameters, to only two transport coefficients, that depends on the temperature. You multiply by beta, this is actually negative, so plus my minus b, you get something that is called momentum diffusivity, while the thermal diffusivity is just the other diagonal term for beta multiplied by beta square. So there are only two uh, transport coefficients left in this system, and they are both function only of the uh, temperature, and they're not function of the velocity. So once you have this symmetry, you just plug it in these uh, in this, this, uh, equations here, and, uh, and you get this uh, macroscopic evolution for the um, momentum and for the energy, with eventually boundary condition we see. So this is in, in conservative form, and you see that uh, uh, only these parameters depending on the temperature. The, the dependence on the velocities in this macroscopic equation are uh, quite explicit. Um, it's uh, actually nicer to write the equation in terms of the temperature. Uh, so you write the energy as the internal energy as a function of the temperature plus uh, the kinetic energy of, of, of the system. Um, then uh, the this, this in, in equilibrium, you will have this relation where the, uh, the derivative of the internal energy respect to the temperature is what you give the heat capacity, the heat capacity at, at constant volume. In that case, you can rewrite this equation here in this way as an evolution for the profile of the velocity and the profile of the temperature. And comes out the interesting fact that uh, the, the way the temperature evolves is that is constituted by the usual thermal uh, diffusivity, usual diffusive term, which is go governed by the, by the um, thermal diffusivity K. Uh, and uh, there is uh, a, a heating term, the gradient of, uh, if there is a gradient of the velocity, this eats up locally the system. So the, the, temper, the, temperature, the temperature changes for thermal diffusivity and for an increase, so you get dispersed by the thermal diffusivity, and increase due to the concentration of the other, of the other conserved quantities. So the gradient of P. So you, and you can see this is always positive, so it only, it only increases the temperature in that point. Now the point is how general is this form of this equation is just uh, inheritance of this particular symmetry of uh, the Sagan matrix for the rotor chain or, or is much more general than that. Uh, and that's one of the questions I would like to address. So this term here is actually the way the mechanical energy transfer to thermal energy. Um, so if you take it account of the boundary condition, this, this is the same equation rewritten, but with the boundary condition that they put. So at the boundary, you will have uh, the temperature of the two thermostats that you have, uh, that we have attached to the side, and uh, the velocity will be given depending in this way from the to forces, to constant forces that are attached on the sides. Um, and uh, you can check that uh, the, the change of the total thermodynamic entropy in the system under this equation, so you have a function, the usual thermodynamic entropy defined this way, so it's a function of the internal energy, and the change of, of uh, the total entropy is just due to the uh, increase uh, of entropy done by the system inside the, 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 the bulk of the system, and there is the flux of uh, entropy uh, from, uh, from, the, from the thermostat. And you can, you can also check, assuming all this local equilibrium, that this corresponds to, to what uh, the local, local equilibrium, so the microscopic dynamics will tell you terms of the microscopic entropy. 
Okay, then uh, uh, if you look at the, something interesting happens when you look at the stationary state. Uh, <clears throat> you look at the stationary state of this, uh, of this system, you expect to, uh, to, to have prof stationary profiles for the velocity and the temperature <clears throat> that satisfy the, 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 this, this, the stationary version of this equation. So you should put uh, equal zero to this. So this, uh, the, this is the current, I, I should have that these currents should, have, uh, should be constant. So the currents of uh, velocity and of energy are written this way. And they should not, in, in the stationary state, they are constant in space. And this must satisfy this, uh, this boundary condition. So the solution of this equation will give, uh, will give the, the, uh, the profiles. Of course, there is here, remember that dp and k are function of the only temperature t, not of, of p. Um, so you can also rewrite the, the current of the energy as the difference as, as, as a term which comes from the mechanical energy current and the other term that the thermal energy current. So you can see that the thermal energy current is the respect the usual, the usual uh, uh, Fourier law that is proportional to the gradient of the temperature. Uh, so the, actually, when we look first at this system, that was a long time ago, in fact, it was 10 years ago, we just uh, blindly made molecular simulation of this, uh, of this uh, dynamics and, and, and of the stationary state of these rotors, and we observed that there were this uh, stationary profile for the temperature, the temperature inside the system was much higher than the temperature of the boundary, of the boundary. So there is kind of heating up of, uh, of the chain in, in the middle. And unlike the usual, the usual profile uh, of, of uh, temperature that uh, should go in a monotone way from, uh, from the higher to the lower temperature. Uh, so at that time it was not yet clear, but now, now it's clear where, where, where this increase of temperature inside the system is. It basically is a way to heat up a distance. You do some work uh, at the boundary and you get higher temperature inside the system. But this, I mean, some, uh, how, how general is this, is this, uh, is this phenomenon? If, if you look at the uh, corresponding average momentum, the, the, profile, the stationary profile of the momentum, you can see that uh, uh, in correspondence to the maximum of temperature, there is in fact a maximum of the gradient of the momentum. And if you look at the equation, if those equations are correct, uh, this is exactly where, when, when there is a gradient of the, of, of the momentum, that's where the system is, is eating up. So in, at the end, looking at back at those equations, it's not surprising that, uh, that you must have, in correspondence to the highest part of the gradient of momentum, a highest temperature at that point. That's where there is a maximum of dissipation of mechanical energy into thermal energy and where the system is heating up. Uh, and then there are, you can also observe that changing the temperature on the right, you can also observe some uh, uh, effect of like a negative linear response, like in, if increasing, increasing the temperature, increase the temperature on the right, you will expect that somehow the, the energy will decrease instead increase the, the current, the current increase. So, uh, and this actually can also be explained by looking at the, at the equation. So the equation looks, uh, uh, the macroscopic equation looks, uh, uh, gives a reasonable qualitative uh, agreement. And uh, recently, we did also some uh, numerical green cubo calculation for this, uh, uh, this co uh, coefficient. They, they, they are very sensitive of the temperature. They decrease quite a lot as the temperature increase. And plugging in these uh, this, uh, fits into the stationary state, we, we see a, a quant quantitative agreement of the, of the solution of the macroscopic equation with what we observe numerically. So the, even though this is all heuristic and cannot prove anything mathematically about this macroscopic equation, this seems to give uh, 
a good agreement uh, and ensure that uh, those two quantities are the only relevant uh, momentum and energy are the only relevant uh, conserved quantities in the, in the project microscopic evolution. Uh, okay, so uh, mathematically this is too difficult, the rotor chain. So we try to look at uh, uh, problems that uh, were, could be more affordable mathematically and also to understand how general is this phenomenon of the, uh, of the heating up of the system inside the, the bulk. Um, this is another, another other model which is somehow easier because we put some noise inside of the system. This is like an harmonic chain. Uh, an harmonic chain, here the design is, uh, uh, this, this picture is made in Euler coordinates, uh, which are the fluid coordinates that, uh, um, that uh, Herbert was talking about. There is an, an harmonic chain related, connecting the, the particles. The Ri are again the distance between the position of the particles and uh, the energy per particle it will be given by its kinetic energy and the potential energy on, on, the, on the left side. Uh, again, there are two thermostat attached, Langevin thermostat attached on the left and on the right, a different temperature. And uh, 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 I want to destroy the conservation of momentum in order to make the evolution uh, diffusive. Um, so this system is like immersed in, a, in another environment, a random environment, and uh, which uh, uh, gives collision of the particle with this random environment. This collision is such that the uh, velocity of the particle uh, change sign, like if it is colliding with some particle of infinite mass. So the evolution is the usual Hamiltonian evolution with the Langevin thermostat on the side, but each particle wait an exponential time, and after an exponential time, change the direction of its velocity. This, mechan this stochastic mechanism conserves uh, the kinetic energy, so conserves the total energy, and does not conserve mom the momentum, but, uh, but the total energy is conserved, and the other conserved quantity is uh, uh, the volume, what Herbert was calling stretch, the sum of the Ri. So you look at the, dis the, you look at the distribution of this Ri, these are the sum of the stretch, this would be the conserved quantity, one conserved quantity, and the other conserved quantity will be the energy, here I just uh, write down only the kinetic part of the energy. This is not conserved, but if you add the V over I, it will be the conserved quantity. Anyway, what you expect, that these two will be the only con conserved quantity of the system, they will have a diffusive, a, a diffusive um, evolution. So we look here at diffusive space-time scale, and uh, you expect uh, uh, that uh, the limit profile, Rx, T, and T, will satisfy this equation, and if you do an heuristic calculation, again, you get that uh, the diffusive equation of or R, where it is equal to the second derivative of the tension, the equilibrium tension, which is a, in general a function of R and the temperature T. And for the evolution of the temperature T, uh, there will be again a term which is uh, uh, dispersive, uh, usual thermal dispersion with the conductivity k, k and uh, a heating up term which uh, depends on the gradient of the tension tau. So the structure is very similar to the one we saw before from the, from the, for the rotor. The point that there are less symmetry here, so uh, in this case the, condu the thermal conductivity is function also of the other conserved quantity, which is the, the volume of the system, stretch of the system. And uh, the, fir the first equation is not is easy to, to um, derive. The second equation, somehow, you have to, again to make for a formal, formal calculation uh, like the one before. This is, uh, uh, this is maybe, uh, 
um, easier to obtain mathematically, but this is st still a difficult open problem. Uh, mathematically, this creates what, 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 what you have to prove is that uh, um, when you have the current of the energy, you have to arrive to decompose the current of the energy in, uh, uh, in uh, some gradient of some function, which will be multiplied by the conductivity uh, and place, uh, and, uh, and then there will be some uh, term, which highly will be the generator of the system, some highly fluctuating term. So this we call fluctua fluctuation dissipation relations. So basically, in some sense, you have to be able to do this decomposition when you do the rescaling in space and time. This is a difficult uh, task, but uh, one, when you have noise inside the system, it, there are tools that may allow to, to, to obtain such limit. Um, and uh, the noise that it will be required in order to obtain this equation will be not just uh, the simple uh, flip of the velocity that the system, but will be something more diffusive involving also the position of the system. Uh, but this is still a, a problem to be solved. There is a, 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 a way to uh, simplify the problem is to take the harmonic chain. The harmonic chain will be much simpler to deal mathematically. Still, uh, there is a lot of work to obtain the equation. Uh, it's just exactly the same dynamics as before, but uh, uh, with a flip of velocity. It's simply the potential now is uh, Ri squared over 2, which is quadratic. And, um, and then you have still the force that pull on one side. The, the will give the boundary condition. So uh, in the, for the, if, you, if you take the harmonic chain, then uh, the macroscopic equation will be this one. Again, you have the same structure as before, it's just that the tension now is just a, a simple function of a linear function of R. And, uh, and here is just, so you just get uh, as the heating up term, just the, the square of the gradient of the, of the tension. And you get this, these are the boundary condition you get from, from the boundary condition we imposed the microscope. And this actually we can prove actually possible to prove. Um, the proof requires some, uh, uh, some change respect to the typical proof of the of hydrodynamic limit, uh, because uh, uh, somehow it's, it's still a nonlinear, it's still a nonlinear equation and uh, it requires some control of force moment, uniform control of force moment of the uh, microscopic variable that uh, uh, where, where we have to develop partic particular tools on that. Um, hmm? No, no, no. This is starting from the this is a real theorem. We start from the microscopic dynamics. We put this noise, flipping noise, and we can obtain such. No, it's not necessary. It's a noise uh, that. Is the noise and the evolution of the dynamics that, uh, that uh, create a local equilibrium, and a bit more than local equilibrium. But, but this comes out from, from, from the, we improve it from the dynamics. Uh, this is not, no, because um, I wrote, I, I like to show the term uh, that increase of temperature, because T is not a conserved quantity. I should, have, I should have wrote in it for the, for the energy, yes. then in the energy will be in conserved, in conserved form. But uh, also here, if you look, so the, 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 they have sim similar relations that the point that the increase of temperature comes from the gradient of the R, not the gradient of P, there are no more uh, velocities here. And, um, and if you look at the at the stationary state, there will be the stationary state will be of non-equilibrium because there is this uh, force that is pulling on one side. The fact that the presence of the force uh, imposes a certain velocity to the system, that the chain will be unpinned, nothing will touch it. So 
and then we are looking at the system from the center of mass. And, um, but the dynamic itself doesn't like to have uh, velocity different from zero. So this is what, what, creates, uh, what creates the non-stationary situation. And you can solve this. this. This is a very easy system to solve. You can explicitly, and you can see that uh, this is a simple parabola. Uh, but uh, with the temperature inside the system is higher than at, at the boundary, like before. Uh, the fact that there are no, the, the other core was much more complex for the rotors, and uh, the fact that fluxes can appear, you can show that this is due to, really to the nonlinearity of the, of the transport coefficient. While here, in this particular case, the transport coefficients are just function of the gamma, the intensity of the flipping of the, of the velocity. Sorry? Yes? Temperature. Yes, temperature different to end. But even if you put the same temperature. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, you can see from this, I mean, you can, uh, you can see from, from this equation, I mean, the, temp te the temperature will fix the temperature at the boundary. But then this curvature of the parabola, this will depend on the, on, uh, the square of uh, tau, of the force you applied. Mm -hmm. You, 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 no, no, you, you still will move. <laughs> you still will move. The temperature will not affect the velocity. The velocity is, uh, but uh, uh, you can, uh, regulating the temperature and the force, you can make the current zero. You can change the energy, the energy current. You can uh, reverse it with respect to the gradient of the But even, even if you put the same temperature, you will have this effect. Okay, so this is what uh, this is like to call uphill diffusion in this, that you can have in certain situation. What I, what I was telling you before. Uh, okay, they are almost finished. Um, there is another situation. So, so how, how, how general is this uh, this uh, this type of equation? I mean, uh, so we saw it for the rotors. We saw it for the harmonic chain. Um, one counter example seems to me the. The uh, ro hard rods, if you take hard core gas and you do the same mechanism of flipping the velocity, this heating up doesn't happen. But there is another case, which is the non acoustic chain. This is, in this chain, uh, the energy does not depend on the distance between the particles, but on the curvature of the chain. So uh, you take, for example, here, this harmonic case, you take uh, that the energy depends on the Laplacian of the Qs, that the gradient of the R, Laplacian of the Q squared divided by. And the conserved quantity now are the curvature itself. Let's call it curvature because this really describes the curvature of the position of the chain, the momentum, and the energy. And you add here a random exchange of velocity, random. Before I was putting a flip of the sign of the velocity. If I exchange the velocity, the velocity of the nearest neighbor particles, uh, you conserve the, the, also the momentum. So momentum is also conserved. In this. But this is again a case in which the free conserved quantities evolved at the same time scale, which will be diffusive. Um, and. Uh, and the macroscopic equation, this is also a theorem that you can prove, uh, that is proven in fact in ARMA, uh, that uh, uh, the curvature evolves following Bernoulli beam equation. So it's, a, it's, like, uh, it's, it's, a, it's like a Schrodinger equation, in fact. So it's just uh, take twice the derivative 
in time of k, you get the force derivative minus the force derivative of k here, uh, plus a dissipative term, which comes from the fact that we put this uh, exchange noise, uh, the exchange of velocity, random exchange of velocity. Uh, okay, this will be for the k and the p, but there is also a conservation of energy, and if you look at the conservation of energy in terms of the uh, evolution of the temperature, uh, you will have again uh, the same structure of the, of the thermal dissipation and a heating up of the beam uh, due to the presence of the gradient of P uh, and the square. Okay, so one question is what about the nonlinear interaction? The fact that here we put some, uh, this noise was basically to simulate what are the effects of the anharmonicity. And uh, if you do it this in the usual uh, uh, pressure model, that means uh, uh, the, like the Fermi pasta Una model, uh, you will get the Euler equation. And then, uh, and then uh, so basically, the, the mechanical energy that evolves ballistically following Euler equation. And then uh, later on, uh, uh, the temperature profile that in fact evolves super diffusively following a fractional Laplacian equation. In this case, somehow, maybe the situation is inverted. And numerically, we were very frustrated in the nonlinear the non case. It looked like, this uh, conjecture, maybe Abhishek is able to do good simulation on this, it looks like the thermal equilibrium for the temperature is reached at still as a, a superdiffusive time scale, while the mechanical uh, equilibrium, which will be still regulated by a kind of a nonlinear Bernoulli equation of the first order, is reached at the diffusive time scale, which is later. So the situation is inverted respect to the usual uh, Fermi pasta Ulam, where mechanical energy, mechanical equilibrium is reached at an earlier time scale than the, than the thermal equilibrium. In this case, it seems that the situation is, is inverted. But uh, this is just uh, speculative. I, 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 I don't know exactly what's happening. And the fact that we get everything diffusive here is due to the fact that we put a noise that is an exchange of, uh, of uh, velocities. And somehow, this exchange of velocities is like a col elastic collision of two particles, which is. Uh, 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 elastic collision of two particles does not, uh, sorry, does not uh, um, represent correctly the type of collision that happens from an harmonicity due to a, 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 an anharmonic uh, potential depending on the Laplace. Okay, see then my time. Thank you very much. I was just wondering if you write the temperature, do you in all in, in in all these models did you always use kinetic energy for temperature? Or yes. It is. So I mean I can also prove that the kinetic energy gives you the temperature. In the, in the local equilibrium sense, yes, or yes. there's a, there is a, uh, there's actually local equilibrium established, and that is actually correct. Because in the original Onsager uh, relations, the temperature is, is related to the thermodynamic force, right? It is related to the gradient or the difference of the entropy with respect to energy. That's macroscopically, yes. Yeah. But I noticed that you use the temperature as like a conjugate to the energy, but then if you write, but you keep on using P for the momentum and you don't use the conjugate variable. Is there, is there a reason for that? I mean, you could have used also the P bar. Well, but uh, since momentum is always Gaussian distributed, uh, yes, what I call P bar. Sometimes I'm sure they wrote, wrote P bar, but I mean, the, the relation is, uh, is linear. For the but everything somehow, because of local equilibrium, it all moans to the same thing. So I do, uh, since so if, uh, if you put energy both in the curvature and also in the stretch, then do you still have to, then is still, uh, like you have to still consider curvature uh, conservation equation? 
sorry, if I put... If you uh, put, so right now you didn't have any, any energy in the stretch, right? Well... Uh, oh, that, and so you could put both energy in the stretch and also in the curvature. Is the, the, the stretch is not a conserved quantity. It's like, it's like the Q for the original, for the Fermi plus tabulum, not... Uh, sorry, why is stretch not... When you, well... It's not true. It is conserved, but somehow it's not a relevant parameter. It's not, it's not, it's not, there's no control of the stretch. It's, it's a bit like, I mean, you can, I mean when, when you look at the, at the system, uh, also the Fermi plus tabulum, uh, when uh, yeah. it's unpinned, somehow the position of the, of the system is irrelevant to evolution. The system is moving, it's just you're looking at uh, the system from the center of mass. And here, in this case, the this extension of the system is irrelevant. Because does, you, you, you can stretch the system, it doesn't cost any energy. So it doesn't matter what the length of the system you're looking at. Yeah, but if you put a stretch energy. Ah, if you put a stretch energy, yes, then you change everything. Then you are back, then you are back to the Fermi Pasteurian behavior mm -hmm. because it's much stronger much stronger uh, interaction than this. The problem is that this is very, when you take a potential, which is function of uh, the uh, of the curvature, is is a very weak, uh, is a very weak. That's that's why the the term the um, elastic col random collision that we use is not the right thing to simulate the anharmonicity in this. Is there intuitive explanation about the appearing of higher temperature than other two and well once once you see the macroscopic equation, it's clear that the max the temperature must be very high where there is a gradient of the other quantity, either the velocity of because in the, the equation tells you of the gradient when there is a gradient of the velocity or a gradient of the of, of the tension, that's is where the temperature increases. So in a stationary situation, that's where, where uh, a lot of uh, mechanical energy is becoming thermal energy, and it goes only in that direction. So it, it was, without, without looking at, uh, at uh, the equation, like 10 years ago, we didn't write down the diffusive equation, not in, not in the proper way. So it looked very mysterious, this uh, increase of temperature in the bulk. Once you see the macroscopic equation out there, if you write it correctly, uh, in the proper way, use all the symmetries of the Sager matrix, then, then it's absolutely clear why you get, you must get this, uh, this higher temperature inside the system that is at the, at the boundary. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, thank Stefano and...